Hello, today I'm going to talk about my experience with UTIs, which stands for urinary tract infections, and how I finally was able to conquer it after a long, painful journey. And what better way to make this video than wearing a sweater in the color that resembles urine? I'm going to try to make this video as comprehensive as I can so I can cover all the bases and it may get a little TMI. I'm going to go over my history because when I was going through all this, people would often offer advice like drink cranberry juice and pee after sex and I always wanted to say I know. So I will list everything that I tried so you know that I tried everything I possibly could in order to resolve this. And there may be methods that I tried that you haven't and it may work out for you. A UTI is a bladder infection. The infection can also spread to other parts of your urinary system like up your ureters to your kidneys. However, this is rare. It's more common in women because our urethra, which is the tube you urinate through, is shorter than a man's. Common causes of UTIs are 1. Sex The bacteria gets pushed into the urethra, travels into your bladder, where the bacteria multiplies and then becomes a full-blown infection. 2. Holding in your urine I started getting UTIs as a kid because I would hold in my pee all the time. So I think that developed my predisposition for getting them. 3. Hygiene E. coli, which is the most common bacteria that causes UTIs, lives in our intestines and comes out with our poop. If you wipe front... wait, what is it? If you wipe back to front, you're introducing that bacteria to into your urethra and your vaginal area. So you want to wipe front to back. I personally do it separately. If I go number two, then I wipe that area first and then make sure that area is clean and then I move on to cleaning the the number one area like I, I just don't understand the full swipe wipe I, I also don't I don't think I'm not even flexible enough to do that symptoms of a UTI are different for every individual for me I experienced feeling like a needle had been poked into my urethra at the end of a urination stream if I felt that needling sensation, then I knew I had a UTI. It was always at the end, like a pinch. I would also feel like I had to pee all the time. One time it got so bad that I actually saw blood in my urine. I know fortunate people who feel nothing at all. So the way to determine if you have a UTI is going into the clinic and submitting a urine test. The lab then tests your urine if there is a large number of white blood cells present in your urine, which indicates that there may be an active infection. This is still not 100%. You then have to wait for the urine culture test, which takes two to three days. This is what determines what kind of bacteria you have and which antibiotics you can take in order to kill that bacteria. A UTI can usually be resolved by antibiotics. Antibiotics kill all of the bad bacteria, but it also kills all of the good bacteria. I have taken Macrobid, Keflex, Bactrim, Cipro. Taking antibiotics frequently messed up my gut health, which in turn made my skin freak out and then I started getting painful cystic acne. I gained weight and I was the heaviest I'd ever been. So I'd be in the thick of a UTI and then I'd get a yeast infection because of the antibiotic I'm on. And then sometimes I'd get my period and I would just have the ultimate trifecta. For me, I experienced repeat UTIs from sex. In one relationship, I got them back to back, which is when I learned to pee after sex. Then in my previous relationship from June 2017, I got a UTI every single month. <laughs> this is when it got really bad. I was in and out of my doctor's office and the ER for six months. I was finally referred to a urologist who recommended that I take a low dose antibiotic every single time after sex. This did not work for me and I also did not want to build a resistance against antibiotics. The urologist also checked for any uterine slash bladder prolapse, which was negative, and sent me to have an ultrasound to check my kidneys for any hidden kidney stones, which 
was also negative. Here are all the preventive measures I tried to stop the madness. Peeing before and after sex. Showering before and after sex. Feminine washes like Vagisil and the Honey Pot. Stopped taking birth control. Changed out all my underwear to 100% cotton underwear because cotton is breathable. Started washing them and my towels in a separate cycle in hot water with natural detergent. Started taking probiotics. Drank raw cranberry juice. A common mistake I've seen is women drinking cranberry cocktail juice, which is full of sugar, which is what the bacteria feeds off of. Took cranberry gummies, drank Korean corn silk tea, which has been used as an alternative remedy for UTIs. This was briefly effective and relieved the burning. Hell, sometimes I didn't even wear underwear just to air it out. Went to a naturopath who gave me a tincture of marshmallow root and I don't remember what else. That didn't work. However, I did learn from the naturopath that in traditional Chinese medicine, bladder infections are caused from stress in the heart pouring into the bladder. I also read an article about the difference between gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria and as I've said before, the most common bacteria that causes UTIs. The same article talked about biofilm. Biofilm is an accumulation of a various species of bacteria along the surface of the urinary tract and bladder. This is very difficult to get rid of and it causes chronic UTIs. Because this was the case for me, I thought I had biofilm. So I started taking the recommended supplements from the article. For a brief period, I took Interface Plus, which is a biofilm disruptor that breaks it down and gets rid of it. I don't know how to pronounce this word, but I also took Laracidine to combat gram-positive bacteria if that's what I had. However, this was unsuccessful. I will link this article in the description box because it may be helpful for someone else. So here's what I did to feel better. Number one, hydration. To this day, if I'm the slightest bit dehydrated, the burning will begin and not relent until I gulp down the earth's water. If your UTIs are being caused by sex, this is the routine that I did in order to combat UTIs. Before sexy times, I always make sure that I drink about 8 to 16 ounces of water right before, okay? Because you want to make sure that you have liquids on its way down to your bladder because when you're all done, you have something to flush out any bacteria that was introduced into your urethra during the act. Number two, pee before sex and pee after sex. Number three, shower. Immediately shower right after you pee. Number four, D-mannose. D-mannose is a simple sugar that is meant to attract bacteria. It will unhook from the lining of your bladder and then hook onto the D-mannose so you're able to flush it out. If you're using D-mannose in powder form, this is the one that I've used when my UTIs were really bad. You mix one teaspoon. It usually comes with a measuring spoon, so it would be one scoop. And the key is to use just a bit of water because you want it as concentrated as possible. Drink it, then wait 45 minutes. Then drink as much water as you can so you're able to flush everything out. Then wait three hours and then take another concentrated d mano shot and repeat this process. I used to do it four times. I had my phone on a timer and everything. So I'm at the point where I don't have to take it every time. So now if I feel a little funny, I'll just take a d manos capsule, which is a lot more convenient for me. So this is my routine whenever, God forbid, I get a UTI. The most helpful medication I've used is Azo, which numbs the ureters temporarily. So whenever I felt the early symptoms, I would take the first dose of Azo, and then within the hour, I would, I would feel great. It would feel like I didn't have a UTI at all. This is so you buy yourself enough time until you can get your hands on, on some antibiotics. Antibiotics take two to three days to kick in. I would also continue taking the azo for two to three days so I wouldn't have to feel any pain. So far for me, I've been able to take the azo for two to three days while I'm taking the preliminary antibiotic for two to three days. And then the urine culture comes back and they're like, okay, that was the right antibiotic, keep taking it. And then it would be perfect and I would never feel pain until the UTI was resolved. You can take azo 
for up to two days if you take it three times a day. In my case, I would take each dose every six hours so I could stretch it out for three days. This changed the color of my urine to like a, a fluorescent orange, which is embarrassing if you're using a public toilet because sometimes it stains the toilets. In conclusion, one of the worst things is that I lost my credibility with my doctors. The urologist was kind at first and then she quickly became rude and dismissive and said that she had other patients who had it worse than I did, which I knew, but I don't believe a doctor should ever make any of their patients feel like their pain means nothing. The same thing happened with my OBGYN who I turned to because the chronic UTIs had left me with relentless burning 24-7 even though I didn't have an active infection. One important message that I'd like anyone to take away from this video is to never let doctors make you feel bad. Doctors don't have all the answers. They're just guessing as they go along. You have to be your own advocate when it comes to your health. One cool doctor who helped me through this whole ordeal, she said that my body needed to get used to having regular sex again within a relationship because i'd been abstinent for so long before that so in my mind i thought my body was going into shock and it needed time to adjust so if you've been abstinent for a while say you're in a relationship now and you're experiencing chronic utis your body may just need time to adjust to the regular intercourse another thing is if you practice oral sex you could be allergic to your partner's saliva you could experiment and maybe not practice it one time practice it another time and just see if you notice a pattern another unpopular theory i had to face because this was the only partner that i experienced chronic utis with was that maybe my body was giving me a sign that I was with the wrong partner. Your body is a temple. Listen to it. Take care of it because you, it knows more than you sometimes. This is a lesson that I've had to learn. To this day, if I have to pee, I don't care what I'm doing, I will get up and pee. And I learned that I needed to understand that when my body wants to pee, it's because it wants to eliminate those toxins. You have to respect that organ and eliminate what it wants to eliminate. Like right now, I'll be right back. If you're going through this right now, you are not alone. When I was going through this, I felt, I felt absolutely alone. I felt like no one understood what I was going through. I felt no one understood how painful it was and how worrying it can be, especially when you it, it becomes a chronic issue. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I will do my best to answer your questions. Um, again, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a healthcare professional. This is purely based on my experience and every, everything that I tried that didn't work, that worked. Um, everyone's different. It may work for you. It may not work for you, but we're all in this together.